construction and analysis of DNA libraries, that is the cDNA and the genomic libraries is a molecular biology technique. And a DNA library essentially is a collection of DNA fragments, a collection of DNA fragments that have been cloned into vectors so that the researchers can identify and isolate the DNA fragments that interest them for any further study. So it is a collection of all DNA fragments of various organisms that have already been cloned into vectors using recombinant DNA technology. I'm going to link the video of recombinant DNA technology for you to understand the process of cloning into vectors. And basically, we are saying that we have two forms of libraries. That is the C DNA, also called complementary C stands for complementary DNA library, which is made with cloned reverse transcribed mRNA. So mRNA is your starting molecule so that you create a complementary DNA strand and then you make the library. Then we have genomic DNA libraries that contain now larger fragments of the genome or genomic DNA. That is the entirety of the human or whatever organism's genome or genetic material. So we start off with what we call a complementary or cDNA library. And like we have said, a cDNA library is a combination of cloned cDNA fragments constituting some portion of a transcriptome. Transcriptome is an mRNA. If you remember the central dogma of biology, we have what we call the DNA molecule, our genetic material, that is converted to an mRNA molecule through transcription process. Then the mRNA is translated into proteins, which are the functional units in our bodies. Now, usually from an mRNA, we can be able to go back to a DNA molecule using what you call reverse transcription, the opposite of transcription. So this reverse transcription process is the one that now helps us to form cDNA fragments from the transcriptome. This is the transcriptome, the result of transcription. So it helps us uh, get the cloned cDNA fragments constituting some portion of the transcriptome of an organism, which are inserted into a number of host cells through recombinant DNA technology. Bacteria or bacteriophage containing cDNA copies of an mRNA population constitute a cDNA library. So now, this is now, if you use plasmids as your vectors, then the host is going to be a bacteria. And that is now going to give us an mRNA population, which is in form of a cDNA library. A good library should be large enough, of course, to contain a representative of all the sequences of interest. And the cDNA inserts should be full length copies of the original mRNA to ensure we have the exact function of those mRNA fragments. So it should be large to represent at least most of the sequences within an organism, and again, also full length so that they have all the functionality. Sequences at both five prime and three prime ends of mRNAs contain valuable information needed for full understanding of gene expression and processing. We usually have the five prime capping and we have the three prime polyethyl. And these ones are very important. So the franking region at the five prime end and the franking region of the three prime are very important. That's why we are saying we need to have full length. And this is going to ensure that uh, if, for example, issues of regulation of gene expression are understood, if you do not include such sequences, then there'll be challenges in the study of gene expression. In higher eukaryotes, that is like human beings and other animals, uh, gene expression is tissue specific. So only certain cell types show moderate to high expression of a single gene 
or group of genes. For example, we are saying that the genes encoding globin proteins is only expressed in the erythrocyte precursor cells that are called reticulocytes. So globin proteins are going to be making for us the hemoglobin. So they're only expressed in reticulocytes, which are erythrocyte precursor cells. Using this information, a target gene can be cloned by isolating the mRNA from that specific tissue. Now, in this case, it will be the bone marrow, where we have the production of red blood cells. So mRNAs in higher uh, eukaryotes are tissue specific. So we are able to now get mRNAs that we know perform a certain function. A cDNA library only represents expressed genes in the selected tissue type of an organism at a specified point in time. So we are not able to get the genes that are in the non-coding region. Remember that only about 1% of our DNA has coding genes, about 20,000 of them. The rest 99% is the what you call junk DNA or the non-coding DNA. So cDNA libraries only represent this 1%, there are about 20,000 genes that are expressed in an organism. The specific cDNA sequences are cloned into vectors. You need to identify vectors, plasmids, bacteriophages, cosmid, um, the yeast, uh, artificial chromosomes, etc. In eukaryotic cells, the mRNA is spliced before translation. Splicing means removal of introns. Usually, if this is your mRNA sequence, usually we'll have what we call exons and introns, then an exon and an intron. So introns are intruding sequences and they are non-coding. So splicing means the removal of intron regions which are not coding for Protein. So there we are told that in eukaryotic cells, so in the eukaryotic cells, the mRNA is spliced before you can translate into proteins. Therefore, the cDNA is synthesized from the spliced mRNA does not contain introns and any other non-coding regions of the gene. Now, as a result of that, the protein sequence and expression can be obtained from the cDNA, which is the main advantage of cDNA cloning over the genomic DNA. So you can see that because we are able to have this sequence that is expressed only, then that helps us to understand gene expression while using the cDNA libraries. And these libraries also generally contain much smaller fragments than the genomic DNA libraries and they usually are cloned into plasmid vectors. Again, look at the video on vectors. Plasmid vectors are the smallest among the other vectors. And that is because cDNA libraries usually will have very small fragments. So we can be able to clone them in plasmid vectors. As we shall see, genomic DNA libraries, we are going to use a larger vectors like Yes, artificial chromosomes.